interesting or, or right with a um, workable feature. There we go. I think we're good. Oh my god, I just have to this out. <laughs> you can't get me this color. Good. Remind me between meetings to bring this Coming together order. fine. Coming together. The buying sounded good. Okay. All right, good. We can call meeting to order at 543 finance meeting, uh, June 14th, 2022. Uh, I'd like to ask for a motion for an excused absence for Mary Brenner Miller. Madam Chair. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to excuse uh, Mary Brenner Miller from the meeting and uh, she may be here. She had uh, in an emergency. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, can we vote on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Perfect. All right, okay. So we wanted to go over the previous audit. Um, so I went through just to, kind of topic by topic what was in there to give some updates. Um, and then I just wanted to put the disclaimer, obviously, since the audit was done in 2020, we had some things in the 1819 audit that were still going on from prior. And then they're going to trickle in a little bit just as well because we already started a new year when the audit cycle, you know, when the audit was happening. Um, so we're working toward everything and then hopefully, you know, everything hammer themselves out <laughs> eventually. Um, that's the craziness of a two year audit. So there we go. Interest allocation. We had a comment about the invested funds from Star Ohio. So we get minimal interest but it needs to be moved at the end of the year. Um, we need to move it into our motor vehicle fund. Um, and actually, uh, I'm going to print star and some things for you guys. I can do that for you to POW. Um, we got a little more interest this month than usual, but yeah, even though it's minimal interest, that needs to kind of, I think, just be moved over so that we can use it toward um, street <coughs> and everything else we need that for. So whenever you have pool investments like we have with Star Ohio, you just go ahead and do that. Um, certificate of estimated resources. I know in the past there were a couple of years where everything I think went over from what the county had told me um, what was actually on the certificate, which is that whole purpose of going through at about this time of the year um, and more frequently if needed to just look and make sure we're still on par with what we appropriated and also what was on that certificate, making sure we didn't over appropriate from the certificate and making sure that we're still, you know, not overspending, um, you know, more than what we were entitled to spend. If we, and if we had more resources come in, that's when we would go amend the certificate with the county and say, hey, we could actually spend a little bit more because we have more coming in. We had a windfall. We have, you know, a grant coming in. Um, so that I'm still just staying on top of that. Um, Angela, just yeah. for the record, I'd like to say that Mary Brenner Miller made it to the meeting at 546. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and if you can continue, Angela, please. <laughs> Thank you for the water, too. <laughs> Didn't you need it. <laughs> All right, the tangible fringe benefits. So that had come up a couple times. Um, the way we had been awarding, we get boot allowance for service. Dispatch gets a closing, al mm -hmm. closing allowance, and police get a closing allowance for their bargaining agreement. Since I've been here, we always just opened a purchase order for them. In the amount um you know that the agreement stated for each year and they each have an employee credit card and even newbies who don't maybe have a credit card we have a, a department card or we can put it on account with atlas and shuttlers so basically they would go purchase what they needed within that budget for the year um and they would just bring receipts back to me so in most cases when you're getting a taxable fringe like that it goes into your payroll and then it's reported as such so that was like one point that the auditors have been making so to remedy that, I've already talked to Stan, and next year we're going to issue, in the beginning of the year, a check, you know, it's going to be with, included with their payroll. So it will be taxed, but it will also be reported on a W-2 as an actual fringe benefit. That being said, they will no longer need to be turning receipts in because they can go, because the other portion of this, that was a little bit of a sticky situation, food allowance for service not usually an issue, dispatch not usually an issue, but with police, they're purchasing sunglasses because they are using them for the job. They'll purchase, they were purchasing cameras that was required for the job, but 
what the auditors look at is, is it something you would have used anyway, or is it absolutely essential to your uniform? You can't do your job without it. So just some of those little incidentals were also being questioned in this way when they've got it and it's all their money out the door right off the bat. They don't need to check with me on, on how they're going to spend it. And I don't need to say, hey, Stan, that was not a legit expense because they needed their own last one anyway. So, um, so that's going to change for next year. Um, and, see, and then we'll also kind of give them a list, like here's, here's technically what you should be spending it on. Um, you know, Stan, Stan's been very well aware, and, and so he was on board with that. And I'll do the same for dispatch and the same for uh, – and that's the other thing. It might even benefit them a little bit more because sometimes even like with dispatch, service gets 250 each, so they do usually try to go to your gear that they're going to need. Um, the dispatchers get either 550 if they're full-time or like 330 if they're part-time. Sometimes Shannon will try to round them up to go ahead and use it as the year gets closer to the end, but some people are losing a little bit, so this way they've got it and, you know, it's off our hands, and they don't have to worry about also spending it down by a certain time um, at the end of the year. So that'll be a little better. Any questions about that? All right. Timely depositing. So um, I'm trying to just think back to the last couple. I was here at the end of that first audit, and then this last one, obviously, that we did together that took a little longer. Um, just making sure everything gets in the bank. I, I think that's been resolved. Vic used to sit on piles of checks just because they were going in as batches and, you know, leave. But we're so small. I need to deposit once a week. And I'll double check with Josh again, too. I mean, during tax season, we're depositing more, obviously, more often. Um, sometimes twice a week on just the tax deposits. But our general deposits for building receipts, for traffic camera tickets, for the banquet hall, once a week is usually sufficient. Um, and so part of the timeliness is just saying, okay, I can see that Lisa generated this many um, you know, sheets of receipts for services this week. And so did Nancy or so did Mary or Natalie. Um, and then making sure that I'm aware of those and I'm double checking those and then obviously getting everything timely. We don't want to be making mistakes for two months. But um, so I think we're OK with that. Um, and again, I'll double check with Josh if once a week is OK, like at this time of year when tax gets slowed down, um, you know, or if there's, you know, they just don't want stuff sitting around. Same thing goes for mayor's court transfer. When Nancy gives me um, at the end of the month for reconciliation, I have a certain amount of time I need to do that transfer in. Well, I just accidentally she handed me May. I took May and I forgot to move May's money into our general account. So that would be something that maybe they would look at and say, hey, what took you so long to move this? Um, the fraud reporting, they had mentioned something about um, just making sure we have instructions out there. And we do in our new hire packet. So I think we're okay with that. Segregation of duties. Um, you know, as everybody kind of flocked out the door from the time I started until even now, we have limited manpower. But what I've done over the past couple of years for the finance department specifically is try to, um, you know, each department's preparing their own receipts. So I double check those. I've been preparing a regular deposit. I have Mary Galanski prepare the tax deposit. And then in addition, we have police going to the bank for us. So the same person is not like generating it creating the main deposit, getting to the bank, and doing the reconciling later, too. So it'll be a work in progress. As we get more new people, that will spread out a little better as well. But as, as far as I, I go in my department, I, can, I try to spread things out to people if I can or get a second set of eyes on it just because, um, you know, we had a better segregation of duties when there were three of us here at least. Um, all right. Cybersecurity, you know, we took a policy in 2021. And then one of the things um, mentioned on there that I think would benefit us is to make sure we have training. So I can talk to the insurance company about that as well as our IT company and tax for email um, and to make sure that we're all working together to actually have a plan with procedures and protocols in place should something get breached. I do know that at TAC, Greg has been working on um, multi-factor authentication. And I actually did um, speak to TAC Hickey the other week and we definitely need multi-factor authentication um, for pretty much everything before they really would renew a cybersecurity policy next year. So that'll be something that's going to be a heavy focus between uh, myself and the IT department uh, in TAC to make sure we're on par because we want to make sure we have a policy for should something happen. Um, so they're really just cracking down on that to make sure everyone's got some tight control. Uh, payroll controls. We still use okay. pay controls. Madam, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, question. So when you say training, that's training for all training of us. Training for all of us. I would, okay. think I would like to have some kind of training of, hey, you know, here's what you're looking for that might be a phishing email. Here's what you're looking for. You know, you've been very fortunate, but anything could happen at any time. And not everybody has access to the bank, obviously. Where Lisa's never logging into any bank account. Nancy's logging into only hers. Mary doesn't log into a bank account. You know what I'm saying? So 
there'd be theoretically one computer over here potentially you know that could that could have something happen with those but just so everyone knows what to look for um you know because sometimes okay. people are just so focused on their own job and they're not paying attention to the other pieces behind it um so i think it would i think it would be useless to have some training for everybody at some point even if we have to segregate it out differently for different departments um or if it can be virtual so i will talk to tcc and uh stack about that um and then run that past the uh, to make sure that you know Angela? I'm sure that's going to be up and coming with the auditors too. Every so often they add a layer and a level to things they're looking at and training on ethics, obviously, is something we need to do. Training on public records is something we need to do. So down the road, I bet you that's going to be something we need to do. Does the um, people who monitor our uh, computers, our IT people, do they offer anything like that? <clears throat> the reason I ask is where I work, we have our IT outsourced. And we had to take, um, we had to take training from them. And then periodically, they'll send send a random email. Yes, that happens. And, you know it. where they're like, oh, and if you you have right on the bottom on our, our ribbon, we have where we can, like, there's a hook. Like if we think it's phishing, or if we want to contact them, we just click on that and it goes right to them. We don't open it, nothing at all. And it's and they said, oh, good job, you caught the fishing. I you don't know, know if PCC is going to offer. That's who we outsource IT to. But the emails outsource tech. I can certainly ask Greg. And we have um, right about holiday time. We put in this Viper security um, system that catches a lot of our spam. Unfortunately, at that time, it caught a lot of my important stuff too. <laughs> so, um, and some of it you can allow and release, and some of it I had lost in the process um, and had to reach back out. But. Um, but definitely, I know what you're talking about. Yes, my husband's work does that, where they try to see if you're going to click. They on try and trick you. Yeah, and it's actually good. So if they don't, if if between the two of our companies, they don't offer it, we'll find someone who does um, to come in and go ahead and train us on that. Yeah. Anything else about cyber? All right, payroll control. So I've still got Katie doing payroll. So she's an outside person that's got eyes on things. And then each, um, and this comes up in the audit each time. We just discussed it a couple weeks ago with them. Each department approves their own. So Stan approves all of his employees. Um, Shannon approves all of her employees. I think Stan might even go ahead and look at hers too. Rob approves all of his employees. They actually punch a clock down there as well. So there's a like, couple layers of features going down there for service. Um, and then Katie also gets to look. And for us in the admin section here, um, Katie is the one who kind of looks at all of it and asks you questions if something looks like it's off. You know, if someone's got overtime that usually doesn't, or if there's a lot of overtime in the department, um, we touch base with each other about that. So that would continue just having, um, you know, eyes on the time card. Any questions about payroll? And then obviously Katie's preparing pension reports, and so I'm double-checking those before I'm putting them in. So dispatch contract, as you know, all the dispatch monies that were outstanding and in dispute for the last audit were cleared up and reconciled last year. Um, I worked with Brian Thompson over at Oakwood. We got everything squared away. Shannon drafted um, an updated contract for us to remove Glenn Willow from the language um, because that was kind of a piece of um, thorn in the side there. And then to just also update because we had uh, the dispatch went to 12. And so we, we wanted to update and let them know, like, here's your coverage per our agreement and, and here's the shifts that we have. Um, so we're all set with that. When are, are we going to see that contract? To be oh, noticed? yeah, I think get a copy to everybody. Yeah. I got to double check with John if they signed it on that side, but yeah, yeah. And then, um, okay, outstanding checks was referring to income tax checks, some from way prior to my time and some from my time. So we've sent out refund checks. They were never cashed. I do still have them on the sheet. This year I need to go through, see if I can figure out, okay, who were these two? Are they still alive? Can I get them a new check? If not, if I can't uh, do a new check, I'll, um, their money will be a sheet to the state. So they'll sit in an unclaimed funds basically. Um, for whoever from their family wants to go ahead and look at that. So that's what that referred to. And then the last big thing was use of credit cards. And we talked about this when the auditors were here. And it was more so purchase. So when I replaced Brad twice, when he was here, he did go in more often throughout the month and look at the credit card statement and put in the entry. That doesn't still mean that the PO wasn't created like after the fact. Uh, where I do mine at the end of the month, um, I just do it all in one fell swoop. 
So what's happening is obviously if servers are going out and they're going to load and they're going to Home Depot and they're going 500 places today, they're not calling me every time they're going to say, hey, I need a deal for this, I need a deal for this, or you know, now he's going to Walmart or something, he's going online to Walmart. I solved part of that problem, a large part of that problem, by creating more blanket purchase orders. When I got here, it seemed we only really had them open for service. So I opened them for rec, so like senior services, right? We know we're doing senior lunch every month. I open the PO, and that way if K&K &K needs to be paid or Maple Heights Cater needs to be paid, PO's already open. Usually they're by check, but just as an example, right? Or if she's shopping for things and needs to go containers, we're already covered because that PO is already open for those supplies for senior lunch. So I've done that with all of our accounts that we're using more frequently. Um, same thing with you know office supplies and regular supplies and all the departments. I'm not sure why we didn't have them open like that before. Um, so that solved a large part of that. There will still be some things. Obviously, when they're bigger things, we all usually are made aware of it anyway. So a purchase order gets done ahead of time. Um, and then the one thing that I learned about the UAN software, so each year I've gone in, I've opened a PO for trash, let's say. I've opened it as regular, but I've opened it 12 times the amount, right, because I'm going to do 12 months of payment. And so that was considered my blanket because it's open the whole year and it doesn't expire, where the other blankets do expire after three months and we open them for smaller pieces. Well, really what I can use is what's called a super blanket in UAS. So there's the regular blanket for the smaller things and then there's the super <laughs> blanket for the bigger things like that. So when I go open next year, it will just be called a super blanket. It'll be the same concept of how I've been opening them, but it, it'll, it'll be a little more proper because for vendors like utilities and trash and things like that, it can be a super blanket instead of a regular if you want. They haven't ever said anything about it being regular, but I may as well use the feature if it's there, right? Any questions about that? Madam Chair, just can I get, so a super blanket is used for large amounts? Yes. Or, or is it for any amount? just based on a long period of time. Well, it could be probably any amount. So if I'm going to pay gas, uh, gas for services for printing our journal, that's not going to be a huge amount. But because we're going to keep it open the whole year like that, I, yeah, I could still use super blankets. So it's more for large amounts. I would say more for the larger contract amounts, but you could use it for something small if you're going to pay them throughout the year, re recurring costs, yeah. <clears throat> Versus the other, like I said, the other blankets are short term. They're only three months at a time. So if I open a $5,000 PO for office supplies for the admin side, and we only use 2,000 of it, it's going to close out after the end of that three months. So 331 if I open it January 1, and then I have to, you know, the money goes back into the pool, so to speak, of whatever was not used, and then I have to reopen a new one, you know, to, mm -hmm. to start again with the next. So where the super blanket will stay open the whole year, so I don't have to keep reopening new ones. Um, all right. So any yeah. other questions about audit stuff? Anything that you think I missed or that... I forgot about. Madam Chair, yes. yeah, I have a general question about the audits. Yeah. Uh, so for the 2018-2019 comments, yes. you gave the update. Are there any potential repeats <laughs> of the same comments uh, in the 2020-2021? Right. So audits? yes, and part of 2020 will probably still be a little bit of the credit card one. I think that is the year we got a nice feature added to UAN in either 19 or 20 where we could duplicate POs. So I can go back and say, oh my gosh, I use all of these all the time. Let me duplicate them for the next few years. That might be when I started. I'll go ahead and look and let you guys know. That might be when I started opening more blankets, but I know for sure 2021 I started opening more of those blankets. So going into the next audit, they'll definitely be a touch. This will be touched upon a little bit. Probably the same thing with that interest uh, being moved over. And usually what they'll do is if they want an adjustment, if it's something that's substantial, they'll say, hey, we're going to give you an adjustment to go make into your fund, you know, fund adjustment. Because um, they have the authority to do that to say, hey, you're part of a fund adjustment, this really just should have moved this year. Or you allocated this incorrectly, it really should be here, go ahead and make a fund adjustment. Um, segregation of duties, obviously, be a little bit ongoing. I don't know that there'll be much about it. We haven't really talked about that yet, this audit, um, which we can technically... We'll, we'll cover it in a second. There could be yeah. a lot down here. Um, payroll controls, I think we discussed, um, but I don't think anything crazy is going to come up with that. Um, in the Within the payroll controls, one thing that will maybe come up, uh, and I'm still trying to get an answer out of Katie, vacation accrual reports. So I know she used to keep an actual spreadsheet, and I'm sure that in ADP, obviously, there's a report we can generate, too. But we used to keep a manual spreadsheet of who, how much vacation time because Angela Reve has left, you know, so that if I leave right now and I need to cash out, is it going to kill us, right? Mainly, obviously, for police more so than anybody, that's going to be important. 
Um, because so that's going to be something that might come up because I need I've been asking her, do you still keep that? Do you have that? Um, and so I need to provide them, you know, a copy of that because it did happen with one employee that left probably right before I got here, but it was part of one of the last two audits um, where we needed to go back and make sure they wanted to double check the vacation hours that were that, that they were keeping that. And a quick follow up to that. So on a on a week to week basis, if the department managers need to approve vacation, what? How do they know what a vacation do they, is there an, another so vacation? There can be an approval feature. So for us, for instance, I'm giving the mayor a sheet saying, Hey, I'd like to be out in these days with approximate hours and things out. But that doesn't mean that the mayor knows what I have and he, he I could be telling her it's been keeping I think a little bit closer track because sometimes things weren't catching up in ADP. They made some updates last year to the system and it got backed up for a minute. Um so they were coming to me to say, Hey, my vacation didn't come right. And we could tell them now. As people who sign into ADP, I can go in and I can go in right now and take a look and it'll give me a little dashboard of where I'm at with personal time, vacation time, sick time and everything. I can also go into another section and take a look back. Where did I end last year and has everything been adding up how it should be for the month? And then where will I end up at the end of this year? I can fast forward it just to make sure that everything, that I'm getting my 10 hours sick time a month, that I'm getting, you know what I'm saying? Pretty standard. So people can keep track on their own too. And that's why I believe there is a report probably in ADP, um, I know, but we should we should still have that spreadsheet. Again, I think the more important part is going to be police because we all know they don't take much time off. So Reve might use all her vacation time in a year, and if I leave, we're, I'm not going to bankrupt us. But if five officers retire and need to get paid out for sick time and vacation time, all at once. That's something we kind of want to keep an eye on, right? So, um, but department head wise, I'm not that stand. I don't think I don't know if he's got the ability when he goes into his new time card to see everybody's vacation accrual. So I have to ask ADP. I don't go in there for much because I'm not processing the payroll. Um, and when I did go in, it was only the payroll I was doing. So I wasn't digging around to see at the time if I can check everybody's accrual. So yeah, I'll ask. I'll ask that, that sounds like that to be a pretty basic. They would have to approve those. Typically, you will. Like okay. You can put in your request ahead of time in ADP if you want. Yeah. Um, or when you put it in, if, if you've told Stan, I'd like to take vacation, maybe they have their own form on that side or they use our same form. If he's approved you going, then when you enter your time, he still has to say, yes, I approved that. So sick time, vacation time, um, personal time, for sure vacation and personal. Those do require manager approval anyway. So Stan would have to could go in and be like, wait a minute, did I know so and so was off last week? I mean, obviously he would, but um, because when he does the time card and approves those, he's going to have to look and okay. check another box to say yes, I know he took vacation time last digit, let it go through. But I don't know if he knows his force. I don't know if he would know that you know, Officer Brown has this many hours total, and now they need to, you know, because that could that each department might do something to keep up their own record but like I couldn't tell you what leave they got I couldn't tell you what Nancy got I mean, you know. uh, Madam Chair yes uh, for Angela uh, Angela touched on this and, and I had brought this up in the office uh, a while ago after the the audit came out um, uh, just to Angela and uh, concerning uh, like police officers uh, retiring and large payouts and things like that. We've, I know I've lived through and the mayor's lived through a couple of police chiefs that have retired and uh, have received large payouts. So uh, obviously the last few years we've been living paycheck to paycheck, but as we start to improve our balance sheet, um, I, I think it would behoove us to start an account yeah some sort of a savings account. So it's not that when somebody does leave a police officer, Absolutely. it's not uh, that much of a burden on us as far as, oh my God, now we have to come up with, you know, uh, sure. six yeah, figures. We've got several officers who can't forget to go in the drop. So mm -hmm. even though some yeah. say they're not, some might, and or they might change their mind. So yeah. Well, we have five within the next five years. Yeah, right. Five that could, you know, I mean, one that probably will for sure. <laughs> so I think that should well, be a budget fun. item for at least, you know, at least a budget item to, to talk about yeah. for next year. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, yeah, just a question for any, well, for any of you. Uh, I had not been on council when 
uh, a chief or somebody had retired, um, what kind of numbers For can, that, can that go into? I mean, is it? Uh, uh, chief Bellman, it was, I want to say, I was like 120,000 or something like that. It's so it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a large it's number. A lot of money. I, I just, oh, yeah, no, it's a lot of money. Because it's 55% of sick time that's remaining as well as Okay. Vacation time, any vacation time. Okay, and then if you have another officer, let's say at the same time, mm -hmm. could really right. I just I just wanted to get a kind of a feel for it. So. Yeah, I mean it would be a little bit less probably for a, a sergeant or an, or, or a patrolman, but you know, right, you know, and that would be the thing too. If I have that accrual sheet, then I've got an idea of where we are with everybody, right? Because I mean, some officers are taking vacation. You know, it's it's notorious that police are fantastic about not taking sick time. They are taking their vacation for the most part, so people are at least getting a rest and getting a break. So, um, and and we have a cap to where once you've accrued X amount of vacation hours, you can't earn more until you're based on it's a handbook. So, but right, it would still just be very helpful to see that so we could map out a fund to start putting money into. You're right, absolutely, I, I agree. Now, the police do also have the option, actually, I think all public employees do, we have what's called um, deferred compensation. It's an extra little benefit that we have where we can put into an extra retirement plan. Now, they can also, any one of us, I think, we can also take sick time. You know, if you're getting close to retirement and you know you've got a lot of sick hours, it's capped at a certain amount per year, but you could say, I'm going to cash out this many sick hours at the 55%, but go ahead and roll it into my into my deferred compensation so that you're making a little money on it as an investment. Um, and then basically we would just make that payment over for the first comp. So that could be ha that could happen at any point in time. I did it. One person asked about it like the last year, I think, but when they realized it was still at the 55% and not at the full amount, they were like, eh, never mind, I'll just let it ride for a little bit. But that could happen. Anyone could come to me and say, gosh, I've got like 2,000 sick hours. Can we take, you know, 500 of those at the 55 percent and can we work on, you know, I'll call the first month and we're going to roll it into comp, the first comp, and then that would be a big distribution I would need to make on their behalf for the first comp. So mm -hmm. it would help to just have that in general. Any other audit questions for this past audit? Any procedure wise? Oh, sorry. Okay. No? Okay. Um, I'll skip ahead really quick just to go over the current audit because it's just a, a small comment. As you, uh, some of you may have seen when you were leaving, the auditors were just leaving. They were on site again this week, but they were working on multiple things, not just our stuff. They knew I was a little bit busy, so um, every so often they just have to appear on site. Um, and they asked ahead of time, can they come to work on site? So they'll be here, I think, again tomorrow. And then they were also taking some vacations intermittently, one or three of them. So next week, I think we are like all back in the office at the same time so that we can um, start working together again. I've got a handful of things I still need to give them and some sit down time we all want to have together just to go over some things. Um, so that's it. Matt's handling our CIT audit, which there's really no activity there. Jessica's handling the JET audit specifically, and then they're all working on Gosh, I hope we're seeing. So basically, Selena. It's another reason they wanted to be here because they they're training Selena. So like yesterday, Josh came. He thought he was going to be here with Selena, but then he didn't realize she took the day off. So he wouldn't have come to work on site here um, if he didn't if he didn't know she was going to be off. But but so that's why every so often they'll pop in. They hadn't been here in a couple of weeks. Um, but but yeah, we're moving along, and hopefully we won't always get wrapped in a lot of things. But there's no you know seven stuff over by a scanner because it's not COVID time. So they've been get, uh, getting everything in hand and I've been giving most of it to them to where they could take it with them. So if they're on site at another location, they could still be working on our stuff if they wanted to. So. Any questions about current audit before we backtrack? All right. Well, then let's go to the financials. I gave you again just revenue and expense right now. Um, what I'm going to do early next week, I got a few other things to button up. I'm going to go back, do the actual breakdown by month for everyone. So you'll be able to, I can send those electronically if you don't want to have them all printed, but that way you'll see January, February. So you can start to see month over month. Or I can even maybe put them together and do some kind of combined report for you. Um, so that way you're not just getting it all like, hey, here's May and here's where we are today. 
All right, so put on the reading glasses. The first things will be revenue. The first four pages are revenue. We're doing fantastic. Tax season was actually like pretty stubborn. I was, I was pretty impressed. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot to put in, a lot of returns, a lot of individual returns. Um, we have had a handful of those refund requests for work from home. One, the most substantial in size, one that was new to someone that was COVID related, I have a lot of page, it was just a little over 5,000 for that for check. Other than that, um, there was one for a few hundred, uh, you know, like mid-level employees. So there was only one person who was an executive uh, from one of our companies. Otherwise, I've gotten the usuals each year where we have drivers or where we have a uh, C-level executive that's traveling and not in the office um, that's out of Calgary, out of wherever. So those have been processed. But so I do see the one sitting in my office uh, that came in yesterday or today. I didn't even look at the amount, but that'll be another work at home one. But we are also getting calls for some of our residents that are now working at home as well. So their companies are now shifting their revenue from wherever their home base was, calling to set up accounts to pay us. Um, so hopefully we're going to kind of break even on that. Um, not too terrible. Uh, so I'll keep you abreast if anything else crazy happens with that. Um, but if we want to go through this um, line by line, we could do that. Let's look at taxes. Um, so withholding, we're already at 1.196 million. We budgeted for just about three. So pretty confident we're going to hit that number. 260 is what we budgeted on individual, and we're already at 179. Um, I had a few extensions with the individual, but some of that, um, you know, they're just going to come in late, and then I'm going to go backtrack and try to do some collection. I am going to try to have Rita come in for a meeting with us or come to a COW um, to give us a pitch again probably in September. I do think it's still going to be in our interest to go to Rita. They just got, a, even if I hire a part-time person that's still one person that's already part of my work, they've got the capacity to see stuff at the federal level a lot faster than the rest of us would because I'm waiting on people to hand me their returns. Um, and so they will be able to go after things that I may not see and then also just have the manpower to do some collection. I, it's not that I feel that we are owed a million dollars in collection, but that's the one thing I've had to put on the back burner is to just basically get get through everything and input. Um, so that'll be hanging out there. And then we got net profit. We're already close to 400,000, so that's good. That, I mean, we've had a few extensions, but usually we're a lot more behind now because those are going to come in in October. We got a lot of companies that usually have extensions filed. So I'm comfortable with where we're at for taxes. Anybody have any questions about taxes? All right, property tax allocations. I feel like I couldn't keep up. We got our advance, then we got this, then we got the rollback, then we got this. So the beginning of the year was, was pretty good for property tax um, as well, because between that line uh, 1,231 and then line 1,390, and if you go to our police pension, um, yeah, we're pretty tight. We put 585 and we're already at you know, almost three, almost 400,000. So we've got another advance and another distribution coming this year. I don't know that there'll be another rollback. We did, the rollback was, I just want to say, it was just over 20000 25000 maybe. Um, and that doesn't happen every single year, so that was a little bit of a bump. Um, Parker program, uh, we've brought in 29000 So I think we got a good, robust program going this year for Parkers. Angela? Yeah. Um, I believe... And tell me if I'm wrong, but that 29000 should be on the next line underneath for recreation entry fees, Parker program, not concession stand. Oh, sorry. Yes, it should. Okay. okay. So we're over by what we thought was on this one. Okay. Um, trips just got going, so we're good on trips. Um, they have a couple of different things in place, like squares coming up. There was one, she'll maybe be ready, I think, and then there's another one coming for us. We were out shopping a couple weeks ago. Um, senior services, right on par for senior lunch. Oh. Things are kind of picking up there, too. I do have to call about the dispatch payments because um, I've paid out prior, but then I haven't mm -hmm. got payments yet. I mean, first quarter, if it would have been due to me, and then just coming up the end of June would be second. But I got to get a hold of Brian Thompson over at 04 because I need to see if we could get our services paid um and some of that might be because some of the administrative things could be could be yeah <clears throat> um so there we have that 
I'm just trying to look at anything that's being sent out. Yes, but they do expect the dispatch service, correct? Mm -hmm. they Absolutely. I mean, we haven't had an issue, obviously. It's Brian and I the same page. So I thought about that actually the other week, and then I kind of, I kind of forgot about it again. Um, Madam Chair, and we do expect our money, right? <laughs> yeah, right. We definitely do. Mm -hmm. Cameras, we budgeted for three hundred thousand down at one thousand line uh, line one thousand six nineteen. Um, and we're at one seventy six to date. This is, a, by the way, all for the end of May. This money will not circulate. Um, obviously, you'll look and see that at one thousand six twenty one, we've got a uh, large permit because we did permit like the demolition up at the corner. And I know that this week, uh, Lisa and Rob and some of our other counterparts have been working on how to figure out some money for other things. Uh, Angela, yeah, for that those permits, yeah. that that is the, that number that one hundred twenty two thousand. That's the number we, uh, obviously, that we've taken in. Do we that's have to expense for permits, correct? Those to safe bill. How much of that one hundred twenty two thousand goes to safe bill, <clears throat> or is that all of our money? Do will we see an expense for that on the? Expense, well, we see monthly expenses for safe bill, so I don't have that invoice yet. Okay. Um, Lisa, actually, she might have just given it to me. Um, I'll have to look at the detail on it. The last uh, safe bill invoice I paid, I think I made it earlier this week, so it was, I want to say, fourteen hundred dollars. Typically, in a month, we're anywhere between, uh, you know, eight hundred dollars and upwards to sixteen hundred, just depending on what's going on. But that doesn't mean there's going to be ongoing fees out of it that we've got. So, um, I'll I I will look at her breakdown to see if any big chunk of that last one had to do with that. Um, but yeah, I can, I can find out if we have an increase, I'll know this. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. So I haven't noticed yet a giant increase to save bill, but, um, and so yes, for sure. Those, like anytime we do building permits, you know, we owe 3% to the state on commercial, which, um, you know, comes out at the end of the month and then we owe 1% on residential permitting. And, um, we pay that out to the treasurer, uh, to the board of building standards. But, um, you know, even though we don't record it as an offset to each other, anytime we take in some building money, it's going to be an offset, right? It's going to be some value we're paying, uh, safe bill, we're paying, you know, anybody we need to pay that needs to get involved in that process. Madam Chair, yes. just to expand on that, most of that is that demolition permit, mm -hmm. yes. which was, oh, you know, 120 something thousand. So there'll be other permits. Too. But the, some of the expenses will be seen in Chagrin Valley's increase right. because we have a third party, you know, Chagrin Valley is doing uh, an inspection um, weekly too to their company okay. and we're paying them. They're managing it two days a week at the demolition project too, okay? Not actually two days of eight hours, but two different days that they go up there and then we work back and it's a Chagrin Valley um, employee. Okay, so uh, my point is, right. what you you what's going to we will be using some of that to pay the added expense, right. the Chagrin Valley that we we didn't see before because now it's part of that. And we did also have a twenty five thousand dollar initial check from um, the Geronimo to get started on covering administrative costs, so that's mm -hmm. you know deposited part of that too. Okay, thank it's you. deposited in here, not that line item, but yes. You got it. Anything else on this page? <clears throat> page two, nothing super notable, really, to be honest. Um, Angela, yes. what is the other miscellaneous non operating? I have to look for you and see what else is in there. Um, for the that's vast kind of difference. It, yeah, well, yeah, and it's a catch-all, and I don't remember what's going in there. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to look for you. I'm trying to think if there's any. We had some DWC refunds um, for a little bit, but um, let me see if there's one big thing. I'm starting to, like, not remember. Like, month by month, I usually remember what I say, but <laughs> it's all a mess in today. Um, so, yeah, I'll look in between these permits. Our gasoline tax is looking good. So, um, yeah. So we break that out into the percentage. You know, we get some from the county and some from the state. So, um, but yeah, so everything's kind of on par there. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else explaining on page two. Okay. 
page three, same thing, really. Um, and then intergovernmental monies, you'll see down under capital improvements, that's going to be, you know, we got our money for um, the water main at Hickory to a chestnut. Um, and then we've gotten, um, we did get a check from the county already. Um, and then what, I, what will be coming in soon will be the OPWC loan money. That will get ACH into the account typically for that portion of Alexander that was loaned. And then that grant check will also come through the county. Um, and we've got some sewer district money in there where you see the 25000 That's the money from NDOR and SB for some personal sewer work. Madam Chair. Yes. And I, I don't mean to back up, but I got... Yeah. <laughs> on the first page, I know we, we talked... I mean, you, you have the traffic cameras there. And a, as you know, some things have changed. Well, we're actually... Um, John Montel is setting up a meeting with... Yes, we're meeting next week with the traffic camera. Yes, um, people and also uh, Judge Nicastro from the Garfield Court to kind of explain the changes, go after, let us know what the changes are because, you know, John's been involved with other communities too, but they want to present all the changes, explain it to us, and then we'll make a decision on what to do. I mean, we'll probably, you know, on how it affects us. Uh, I did so, do the webinar yesterday. With right, the there was a webinar. Was you webinar. did that. John did it. Um, I don't know. If, I know Stan did it, too. Yeah. Um, so there was a webinar, too, presented for all communities and stuff. So we're just kind of gathering all that information. I know some residents have even emailed us and asked us what we're doing. And we just, our cameras, of course, are in force, mm -hmm. are still in place. But we're just... It's really going to be coming to a head in the next probably two, three weeks on where we're at because now everybody's starting to understand it on a legal end, too. Mm -hmm. There was just a lot of it's not real, you know, easy to read. So we're gathering all that information. We're going to have a meeting um, next yeah. week, too. So I think after that, we'll, you know, be ready to meet. We'll know exactly which direction. I, I mean, based on the webinar, I don't. I think it's going to change. I don't think anything will change no. for us, no. But we need to know that. And we right. need to know what, because there are some things that change, maybe how the court collects the money. And those are yeah, some of the things that Judge it. Nicastro wants to explain. Which we may not. And think, she's doing that with other communities, too. That's you know. correct. Yeah. I uh, think since we've upped, since, the, since we went to Garfield Court, I think we've had less people contesting their tickets because it's just not, you know, it's more costly to contest than to make a ticket at that point. So... But that is something, you know, I'm sure we'll have more discussion on, yeah, absolutely. you know, as a body and also something, you know, not that we've ever used it because we've all been very cautious. We have we know it's important to keep the speeders down on, on our, our main road there, but it is also in here. Mm -hmm. So we have to be aware yeah. of it and, and make sure we're prepared if things change. So I just want to let you know where it's not like we just fell asleep at the wheel. We're just gathering that information and we're the big thing was this meeting we're having moving forward and all of course they had the webinar too so uh, madam chair yes uh, i had a question hey, angela could you go back to the sewer improvement and then also the other intergovernmental uh, the sewer improvement that was a specific project um or? yes i can go pull info and tell you what it was because that one's been in there a couple months already um yes sometimes if we've got to go self uh self-perform something then we can go ahead and bill our hours out to the sewer district. Um, and then um, obviously we also, um, and as a matter of fact, that whole one there might even be um, the Hickory Tula one. I'll have to look because that check came right as that water main was like, they were barely getting started on it when the check already came. Uh, but yes, there's upon occasion we do some self perform some things and then Rob will bill back hours um, and we will be able to check that with the state of water or the sewer district. So yeah. Well, I'll let you know which one that came from for sure, or if there's <coughs> components in there. Intergov the intergovernmental is usually more of road projects oriented, you know. So. Any other questions on page three besides um, the one that you mentioned? Angela, the line item for the sale of notes. For 2021, that's where the deficit at the end of the year came in. Correct, because I did not put in the full amount. I put in what we were going to net 
when you sold them when you did the note. So this year we plan to pay down, or we will pay down, because we always almost pay the whole thing off. So we're gonna pay down two million of it. And then if you go into your revenue side, you'll see notes coming in and that will let you know how much we plan to go ahead and redo. Okay. Um, I mean, and if we have a windfall, we can pay more, we will. And if, you know what I mean? Um, but yes, yes. <laughs> Got the correct way to know yourself. Absolutely. If we go back to last year is when you, um, when you look, we were paying more because of Dunham, right? So if you look at that 1145, that's really kind of what we were going to net after the fact when we redid the notes prior to anything else for like the growth or anything like that. Um, so that's that's where I had the error. Sorry, I'm going to mention that instead of putting that, hey, you got to pay it all off, then we're going to take this amount on the revenue side. So, so are you saying there should be a, uh, a figure there? There is a figure of $2 million that we're going to pay out. But, and it's but kind of, not on the sale of notes one. On the revenue side? Yeah. Yeah, so on the revenue side, mm -hmm. we should have a figure. Not on my sheet. It's right. on page three. Page three. Yeah, not on, not on my sheet. I don't, I don't have it. It's, it's just shown. budgeted. It's just budgeted MPA. in on page three, 22, 2022 budget. Yeah. Under right. special bond retirement fund. You don't have page three? Yeah, I'm on page three. Right, so you're looking at special bond retirement. Okay, I see. 3101, okay. and then when we go to the expense side, okay. we'll see. Right, and I'll, then you take the two, then in between there is okay. your net. Yeah, yeah. I, I, right. I see it now. Yes. Now I was looking at the capital sale of notes. Oh, oh gotcha. Yes. Oh, Angela? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, Angela, in the last second to last line item on page three veterans memorial there's twenty six thousand five hundred dollars what's that for that is also some just it's just miscellaneous money i don't really this does not all go to veterans memorial so we can scratch that title when we do read the report the 4902820 was for the brick but the other portion is not it's just a miscellaneous non-operating so that's another one i'll find out exactly what we're in there for you um, but it really isn't anything to do with veterans anymore. Is that a fly that works more of kind of dropped under the title? Yeah, I'm still not sure. Okay, so yeah, I'll look. In between, I'll, I'll go for it. Tell you all about the miscellaneous money. Anything um, else on page three? Okay, next page is um, the mayor's court in that first line item, and then the second party service, that's senior lawn care, basically, though. Um, that's what you're looking at for that 28,000. So we came very close to uh, rent payment last year. Maybe one or two people that didn't end up taking the service. And I'm sorry, you said that was the snow plow in the... That's just senior lawn care right now, because okay. we haven't done snow plowing in this time frame yet. Yeah. Yeah. It will be down the road. I will look at it when we go to the other issue. Um, and we're just a pass through for that. Again, it's not a money maker for us. We end up paying out of Shark Cave or we kind of an intermediary. Um, Jet is on par. I did owe still their fourth quarter payment and then their first, but I just paid those in June. So you won't see those till the June report as well as the transfer into the gambling trust. Um, I do have to contact Tom Jordan. He had one company. Um, that's actually a PEO. It's a, it's a, um, I think it's a, like a third party with employees. That since COVID has like seemed to not be part of the jet anymore. I haven't seen anything from them in the past year. Um, so I have to just double check with Tom and say, hey, do we need to look into this or is it okay that they, because their headquarters was never over here anyway. So I'm not sure if maybe they were working within North Coast Hospital. Like say they were doing food service or something like that. Um, so I, I will look into that. It wasn't. It wasn't a huge amount that we're losing, but we only have about five players that are part of the jet, so um, it you know makes a little bit of a difference in what we're paying out um, and what we're taking. Okay, any other revenue questions? All right. So we are right now we are as of 
but we're ahead on revenues over expenses, which is good. Now, when you're looking at this report, I will tell you, I'm going to have an updated one for you because I've got one PERS entry that I was waiting on the report from the previous four that needs to go in with about 40 grand. Um, and then I do still have credit card entries that need to go in. Um, but when I give you the month by month, everything will be updated, um, you know, to date for that. But we'll still we'll still be ahead. We're like I'm like we're sitting really pretty right now. <laughs> it's a nice picture. Um, granted, our road programs are just starting. So, all right. So police salaries. Uh, we budgeted 9:30. We're almost not even halfway there, so we're doing okay there. When you look at police overtime, it looks like we're way over budget. Um, Part of that is going to be legit overtime because of, you know, losing Lettner and um, losing a couple other officers. But part of that also gets offset with money that we get for UH for those grants. Because um, when I'm booking in the police overtime, I'm, I'm putting it in that line. And not, some of it's true overtime. Let's say we have a part-time and they're working overtime. It's true overtime. Some of it for specific officers, they're always going out to our co local companies to work. And so when they're doing that, um, community diversion type stuff and they're working out elsewhere, that's where our grant money is coming in from UH to offset some of that overtime. Um, so I can even make a little spreadsheet that has to do with that too, so we can see like, hey, what are we taking in in the grant money versus those officers that usually handle those um, duties and what we're spending um, to pay them. All right, uh, dispatch, we're doing okay. Uh, you know, everything's been a little rough over there. They've lost a couple people as well, um, or a couple local people dropping down to less hours. And so they did promote Libby Combs to full time because Erica Phillips had left at the end of November. So in April, Libby became a full timer. Um, they interviewed, you know, several of them, and that's who ended up getting it. We had one person leave because she just she moved and she was just too far away to have to drive in now. Um, so they're going to be looking for people, I'm sure, as well. So we may see a little bit of an uptick in their OT um, until they get people, uh, because we are working with four full. Uh, we still have four full timers right now, but we're down to I want to say like three, only three or four part timers. We've got a couple very, very part time that we don't see that often um, at all. There, but but yeah, so they'll be looking for some people. Um, and then I'll talk to Sting. So, you know, ideally, if we can, we want to retain them basically because everybody's being coached all the time. So, we lost Brianna, we lost Latina, um, and, and sometimes our hands are tied and we just can't do anything about it because of money. But we might be at a point where we can look at offering offering those, uh, those officers as full time. So, so that would be something we can revisit. Um, yes, I would prefer that we put on another full time person if possible. Because we we lost recently two very good officers, unfortunately, because of that. Um, let's see. So everything else on the remain is just on um, par with OPERS and OPM and that thing. Uh, so lots of wear and tear, and so we may we may have to revisit that. I did not put it on here as something to talk about, but that's probably something we have to revisit. Madam Chair. Yes. Does that include an accident too when we make repairs? Yes, that it does include an accident. Well, so that, some of that will also be an offset. We've had right. we had a deer come out. We had a couple different things. So yes, I know for sure we've got seven grand that came in on, on an accident. So exactly. So I'll take a closer look at when I offset the costs of you know what came in for insurance. We might end up actually being okay. Um, but I do know last year, you know, we did have auto repairs out the roof in all the parts. So. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, just last time that we purchased new vehicles was what 2019 no police have gotten one every year they've gotten one every year mm -hmm. okay yeah at least one every year i feel like they got two in 19 and then they yeah got, that's yeah and well, then they got right. one in 20 one in 21 but, okay the one in 20 was actually one of the ones that was out of commission last year and we couldn't find the parts for that's the longest the one time that the parts, so. right so we're okay. talking brand new cars so um and then they bought so they bought one last so year. we're we're getting the cars they're just we're getting they're the not cars, operational they're not, yeah they're just <laughs> okay <laughs> okay or for everyone we get something else they're gonna come. okay which is why I said I think maybe we should look at, although I know it's across the board, but maybe a different vehicle in the future, you know, possibly. With the price of gas, I'm going to suggest we start doing bicycle police. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Electric bike. You're, you're rural enough over here. Get the over, money. <laughs> you're rural enough over here. We've got, we've got the, the property to do it in the bike lanes. Um, yeah. ATV yeah. police. Because we'll talk fuel. We'll get a horse again. <laughs> All right, so on the page, I believe it was on page two. Um, fire contract, you'll see the eyes are paying as the fire contract, so that's why I want to make sure I get my stuff running. Um, 
other than that, I already told them what he did. I'm going to head down to Breck's apartment. Uh, contractual services, that was a late payment we just made. Nothing too extraordinary on here. There is TD Young Park. That's me. I didn't bug it enough again. So basically, sometimes when we're getting topsoil or we're getting infield mix or we're getting stuff, in the past, it's been thrown everywhere. It could be thrown just under a regular building and land and line. But really, for Rob's benefit and for ours, I, I like to keep it separate. So I did separate it out. That's why it shows that I only budgeted 500 and we spent that much. Because once we get the ball fields and stuff, it really, I should have been budgeting more for them to know that value for the kids for the park. Um, so I'll offset that in another line. But going forward, just remind me, please, in the capital budget to go ahead and add some more into the park. Um, all right, I think we are okay there. Um, I'll take a look at engineering salary because I know we did our budget before Joe asked for the increase, so we might just need to bump that a little bit. This is before we go on to page three. All right, utilities. This is going to be on my list to talk about because if you look at the natural gas. Uh, holy guacamole. So just like at my house, when I had the call, which was from December to some weird, you know, everything fells off and we had to call everybody. Our, I thought that the person who does, the third party who does our um, prices for our electricity, she put that into play last year. So we're on a contract um, for the next couple of years on that. I thought I gave her gas to look at as well. So I have to touch base with her. If she did not get the contract for me for some reason, or if she did not get to look, I've had some well, another person call me as well. But I think it comes down to we need to renegotiate our prices. We only have about, I say, five gas accounts, but some of them have been like you know, sky high compared to usual. So that'll be something we're going to might need to increase, obviously, um, budget wise, but then hopefully it's going to taper down and it's not going to be something we need to actually double at this point in time. So I will um, revisit that with everybody once I talk to them. Um, otherwise, we're doing okay. Trash removal looks low because I do have to back it. That's on the credit card each month, so I do have to add those ones. In. So we're going to come pretty close to budget on that for sure because we've been hovering around fifteen thousand as a rough trash. Um, let's look at our service department. We are over. One of the things we'll discuss, um, and and we can touch base with Rob. I I mean I know there's always extra stuff coming up. So when you're looking at this specifically here. The overtime in this area, we're already over by 46 bucks from what we budgeted. So if we think we need to add more to that, because we still have a half a year to go, that's going to be important. Um, and then likewise, you'll see when we get farther along to the 2011 uh, service accounts, we are also very close to the budget on the overtime. So obviously part of that was we had snow this year, so snow plowing season, um, and then, you know, whatever else is coming up. Overtime still been happening, not, not as many hours as during um, snow plowing season, obviously, but there are still hours here and there, and it could be that maybe it goes out of hand, so they need, you know what I mean, so I just need to kind of go over that with Rob, um, and that'll be something that we talk about when we think about Madam it. Chair? Yes. We were out, we had a couple of employees out with yes. six One injuries, injury. yes, yeah. Yeah. so we make up that, you know. Yep, 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 so we just may need to add. To provide the same service, so right. that's some of that. Sometimes you have good years and, you know, better years than others, so. <laughs> and it may offset a little bit because Rob did take a little while to hire a new part timer as well. So there's a little bit of cushion in the salary area for the beginning of the year from that. So, so we'll see. Um, but what we'll want to do regardless is we'll want to increase that appropriation line so that we're not just going, blowing it out of the water and going totally over the appropriation line. So if we can offset it to increase, um, we'll do that for sure. Everything else and the 620 service department line at the top is okay. Um, we're good so far. No names of land and everything in that section below. Uh, let's see. Mayor looks okay. Council looks okay. Um, yeah, nothing so far. Not a land tax, so we're good there. Questions on anything going down through this mayor's court salary portion on page three. Angela, we did 
or I should say you did, I believe, account for only five council members this year? I did. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I had one question, Angela. Yes. So when you when you take a look at the when you're when you're looking further into the natural gas, uh, yes. whether it's could you make a, de a determination whether it's actually dollar per you know cost per MTS yes. or, or if there's actually an increase in the MTS? I'm betting it's going to be the MTS cost uh, versus of actually versus increasing usage. usage. Now we may have had a couple months of usage, you know what I'm saying? But for me to have like one of our bills was eighteen hundred dollars just in May. What the hell are we using eighteen hundred dollars worth of gas for in the month of May? I have to see what location that was to as well. Um, but right, I'm just like that's not right. The rest of them seem like they started to at least come down seasonally speaking for me. Um, because you know how it is when you're at home and you're trying to make these phone calls all the time because you're like, oh, I gotta put the phone up because the cable went up, the gas went up, the electric went up. Um, here we've got so many accounts that it's it's easy enough, especially for electric, a little less for gas, to say to someone else, hey, can you go take a look at these and find me the best deal? So yeah, I'm gonna definitely double check that. But I, my guess is it's gonna be the cost for MCS. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, that would be my guess too. I'm looking at the stuff to redo the power contract for our house. Yeah. And and it is, uh, I think, um, I'm paying now three. Bucks per MCF, three something. The next hike is between just for my from what I saw briefly between seven and eleven dollars. Right, I would in the winter I noticed, and it was like you know mirrored my mother's bills, my bills. It, the hike went went up to like almost seven from where we were, and I hadn't changed it in years to be honest with you. I hadn't had the call, um, and then I think I was able to get four something. So. So yeah, it's something to pay attention to all around. And I don't know if anybody's shortening their time frames either um, to say, okay, we're not going to give you this long on this price. That that could also be happening um, just based on everything else going on in the world. So we'll have to see. Well, that would speak also, um, Councilman Fitznagel, about what we talked about with the event center and having somebody there to make sure that the temperature is not freezing the entire weekend or the heat is on the entire weekend after an event and things like that. Right. So do we have, just as a side note, do we have any idea where we're at with somebody doing that with the party? No, but I can, uh, not off the top of my head, but I can ask uh, Natalie. Okay. I'm going to guess that she hasn't thought anything about that since we could wrap it up in two weeks. <clears throat> so, I mean, what are we looking for? Are we trying to find? That position that we, Madam Chair? Yes. The position we approved. Um, for a person, like a, almost like a custodial type thing for the parties. What do you mean approving? I mean, it's, did you just approve it straight, like not in 250? No, we, no we, we created a position. Mm -hmm. in, in, since it's, it's, yeah, we created a position. We created I a thought, position. Yeah. I don't remember the question. Um, or we it were going to put already be but, in there. Yeah, but the, the reason, one of the things uh, I talked to Natalie about, not to get too far off track, I know we want to get to the budget is um, looking for that assistant because mm -hmm. we need that. We need that assistant too. And, but that's another okay. uh, thing. So I don't know if the assistant will fill. I know talking to Mary today, you know, we were two days into the Barker program. It's going pretty well. She would, Mary would just stop down to Lake to see how that was going too. And um, we do have those counselors. So we'll, you know, the adult counselor, see how that's going too. But yeah, so. Yeah, the idea was somebody that would be there during an event. So right. if a toilet overflowed or something like, you know, there was somebody there as the point person that would be able to handle that. Any damage, and, anything. Right, like and to document any damage mm -hmm. to any of the facilities. Um, also to open and close yeah. the facility without handing a key to a stranger just based on a driver's license. Um, but they would also be in charge of making sure that the air conditioning is adjusted after the event for the rest of the weekend or the heat, you know, as would be. Thanks for the back then. All right, so page, I believe we're on page four now. Yep. Boards and commissions, nothing out of the ordinary there. AOS fees. Um, I'm just going to talk to the auditors. Um, I'm, I'm hitting a little bit of points ahead of myself here, but like so things I wanted to like revisit. Um, audit fees 
I put in 15 grand that he might be okay, but I've already up through June, so far in June, and I just paid a big one, so I've already paid out about 10,000. So I'm going to ask them, like, how much more is there to go on this audit, do you think? Because they're given a budget to work with as well. Um, <laughs> we got a meeting going on. Yeah. Are, you guys are welcome to stay. Yeah. It's a finance meeting. But you um, can sit here. <laughs> so they're giving okay. an audit budget to work with. Thank you. Basically. Um, and so I just want to double check with them. Did I even budget enough to begin with? Because I just seeing that big one, that might have been the only big one we're going to have. But I was like, oh, I already hit about 10 grand. And so I'll just double check with Josh and say, hey, by the way, what was your audit budget for the year? In case you need to increase that. Okay. Um, paid one quarter of the accounting system fee so far. So we're good there. Um, solicitor, nothing out of the ordinary there. Income tax, so far I have processed 26,000 in refunds. And like I said, that did already include, there's one more big executive that's gonna be asking for his, um, but I think we're okay at that 75,000. I don't think we're gonna need to touch that. Um, I wish Brian would just get that, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Brian, no. Um, all right, so then administrative salaries, um, you know, my, my 20,000 sitting there for my part-timer still. I'm trying to get to that job description. I have been utilizing Mary. I've got Mary inputting the COVID tax for me for uh, it's very basic data entry. Obviously, she's doing my deposit, and there's some other tax stuff behind the scenes, and I've also had her work on this. Um, so originally, I was like, how am I going to give her minutes when I'm at the meeting? But I said, here's my chicken scratch. Go for it. Let me know if you need anything, um, just to make sure that I'm trying to alleviate some of my extra stuff. Um, but hopefully the part timer is going to come on soon. You know, I'm working on that. Um, what's everything else in here? I think we're I think we're doing okay so far. Um, insurance and bonding. I have a second payment to make out of that. We pay it through installments, so that's why it looks like we got a little cheaper than that. And then and payments what, to county treasurer. I'm going to double check because we budgeted 15, but I paid 18, so I got to see what that is actually for. I don't remember what that's for. Angela, what is the professional and technical services right there? So this could be anything that we're using, like um, Jan Pro to clean our building. Um, I don't know what else we put in that line specifically. Um, Madam Chair, does Tom Jordan fall Tom under that? Tom Jordan, yes, yes, yes. Uh, anything on the status home section, but um, yeah, Tom Jordan would fall in there. So we've got a couple different vendors. Miscellaneous. The miscellaneous. Well, the professional. It's another little miscellaneous. Like yeah. the engineers would have some time in the back. Same. Same. in the same pot. All right. There's nothing in capital transfer and transfer yet because that's all kind of end of the year stuff. SCMR fund, like I said, if you look at overtime there, um, we're, we're obviously very close to, uh, and I'm sure by the time we do June, we will hit that mark. So that's something that I had put on our list to touch upon. Um, and I'll talk to Rob and say, hey, like, where do you think we need this to be? Um, well, and is some of that offset to then from salary? Um, yeah, true. Some of it will be offset. Well, yes and no, because if, like, if I've had surgery and I'm not sick, I'm still taking the sick time, right? So one person was out sick. Actually, I questioned it because I said, okay, payroll, this person needs sick time two weeks in a row. I didn't realize they went out for surgery, but Rob came back and said, yeah, they have surgery. So we're still paying the people that are out. It's but that would be under sick time. Um, we don't, well, yes and no, we don't, I'm trying to think, yes, it will fall under six time on here, which we don't really budget for, though, so as long as we don't budget in what's going to happen, um, so, like, I'm looking, because they do have, they did have, yeah, so it could be, I'm trying to think about where it fell, because, the B line item, uh, yeah, that's yeah. where it should six, be, except, except it's not, I know I've had some people out sick. So I'll look and see where it ended up. On the SCMR, SC there, there is a value of $10,210. Oh, yeah, thank you. Sick. So there you go, exactly. So we, it's not going to offset, if you will, because we're still paying it out, so it's just falling mm -hmm. in a different line. Um, so one other question about here, Angela. Um, I, I do understand that there is a Parker counselor yeah, and being so used also time. is that yeah. pay yeah. Being split between the it is it's split so okay. just, we split mark around between driving and in, in the auxiliary and, and i've just been splitting mary as well um so mary when she does strictly finance work is um, i've got her in at the finance clerk high end of the wage 
So I, you know, like it only, I only was able to pull one paycheck yet so far, but so she had eight hours last pay, and I told her it was a 20-minute hour to do the five minutes work versus her regular pay. It was like a straight A in the program. So I'm, we're keeping track of when she's working on my stuff versus when she's doing stuff in general. Now, the other thing about Mary is we've had her on loan to Natalie, but really we've still just been billing her out of her area. So we haven't been using our kind rec assistant line item for anything yet, too. So in the end of the year, there could be a wash among all the salary lines, per se, you know, among the personnel lines. Um, and again, Rob didn't hire Scott Day in until a little bit later into the year. So, yeah. So we'll see. Like I said, yeah, we may have to be another like wash a little bit based on his part time where he wanted not being hired in this early. So, um, and as a matter of fact, I didn't even, I got to put a separate line on our sheets when I book in the payroll because really Scott right now is lumped in with everybody else. So I was going to ask because there is no yeah, seasonal. Yeah. I mean, he did just start, uh, I want to say in, in April. So, but yeah, I don't, um, I've got the part-time salary line here, but when I break it out actually on our pay voucher report each month, I don't think we have a separate line on there because we haven't had a part-timer in so long. So I will, I will go ahead and break that out. I don't have to remember to put it in the same for mine. Um, Okay, same for the seasonal one then too. Well, correct. So seasonal year, we're not going to see a budget because we didn't budget for it, but that's going to be offset also by those wages that we see when we got part time. So yes, you will. Yes, you'll see that in the spring as well. Yep. Now, right now, he's with obviously the carport. So mm -hmm. I'm Rob's going to have to give me a little bit of a breakdown. Though I think we did tell Katie we we're going to split that out because what happened is I look at the payroll report. Mark falls all under the police area, but I can see his split in the sense so to speak, of the copy. So I know for sure that this was billable hours to police versus billable hours to rec. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, so when I looked at trade, I didn't see that yet. But I knew at the time, based on timing, we weren't doing partner stuff yet because we wanted to rock. So right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But now going forward, if he's using him, let's say, you know, trade's not working on a Wednesday and Rob needs him, that I need to know that. I need to know the mm -hmm. breakdown for that. So we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, all right, nothing else exciting there. Any questions on the rest of this page? Everything's pretty status quo. We had one call payment out this year so far, and obviously later on we'll have another call. Okay. Police and fire pension, that's what's been collected, uh, what we've um, paid out to OPS through May. And, and that's always like in arrears. So if I'm doing it, uh, if the payment goes, it hits our accounts in May, chances are it's either a March or April payment that was generated depending on um, Katie's trust in that. Angela, could you speak a little more into the microphone, please? Oh, yeah. I had a text from, yeah, I, read I moved it out of the sound. Is I off. moved it out of my way too far. I'm sorry. Um, all right. And then water meter repair fund, that's kind of an over and done with. I budgeted an even 12 and that goes up just a little bit each year. So we had already paid that. That's over and done. Um, Dunham Road Water Main Rehab, that's something that's pretty much already done. Uh, capital Improvements, I, I mean, so last payments out to Fabrizi, and then it will be time to start paying on the new pieces soon. So if, do you have any questions about any of the capital improvement payments? You see engineering services are broken out separate there. So that's Chagrin Valley. Joe himself is paid on our payroll. So he's listed in our regular payroll section. But this particular part um, here is the actual Chagrin Valley invoices. So for any questions there? No, um, Angela, I know you did say that you were going to have to open up a purchase order initially. Um, but it wasn't going to show up on the budget for the two trucks. Right, and since I not... haven't given you the GF page, the general fund page, the third section that usually goes with this, you haven't noticed any of that okay. because that's where you would see encumbrances. So when I do give you those, I'll already have it closed out. It was opened in, what did I say, end of April, April, early May for the trucks, and right. then it'll be closed out. I can close it out the same month still. So then okay. you'll it'll be seamless to you, okay. <laughs> basically. Um, but yes, yeah, you won't notice that it won't show up as an encumbrance. Any other questions for that for now? Obviously, reach out as you digest. Um, all right. And then I will quickly go through. We touched upon some of this discussion of potential 2022 appropriation amendments. I talked about fuel 
um, with the cost of fuel going up. I budgeted in the service line 25K, but we're already at almost 15. It's gonna look like we're a little bit over that, but a couple of invoices paid early on in the year were from the end of last year. We talked about natural gas, medical and dental, might need to adjust for those increases because obviously we didn't have the increase to those. The vision insurance did not have an increase again. So I'm going to take a look at those and say, hey, overall, this is where I thought we were coming in and this is where we're coming in. So just to see if we need to, um, you know, do an increase because I want to say the last invoice coming in now, it, it's almost $5,000 more a month. Um, I thought it was going to be a little bit, just double check it because they're playing catch up on some, you know, enrollments and stuff. We talked about the service OT budget, so, just, so there's gets a little hefty depending on the season. All right, quick discussion of the policy and use of department credit cards I want to throw on here. I did not give you the policy yet. It says see attached, but I will. I'll email everybody our current policy that we have in place. Um, all departments have cards. This is just for you to digest so you can start thinking about I know we had a little bit of a brief discussion about do we really need to have all these credit cards, and I'm not going to be the one to cry if we don't have them all. Um, and if we stick to maybe one per department, um, I know service will probably have the hardest time with that because of their ease of going to get supplies because everyone in the department has a card. Police, uh, most of them who have a card, they're using it for uniform allowance. So once we adjust how we're doing the uniform allowance next year, that's going to go away. We've got prisoner supplies that go on it sometimes if we need to do meals or, you know, stuff for laundry for prisoner supplies. Um, and then equipment. Yes. Um, huh? Yes, Madam Chair. No, no, that's different. Gas is separate fleet cards. Oh, they got a fleet card. Okay. Yeah, they have fleet cards for gas, so I'm not including that in here. Everybody okay. can still keep their fleet card. They're going to need to do that. Um, this would just be the regular card. So most of them aren't out doing anything. Dispatch is using primarily for uniform allowance um, or like their notary services when they've all renewed notary. So you'll see that if you look at a statement either up here as under the dispatch card or under Shannon's card. Um, so there might be supplies purchased if Shannon needs ink for, or, you know, something like that. But minimal use in the dispatch area. Um, and again, police aren't overusing theirs. It's just more so uniform allowance is probably the main thing that each of them would use it for. Part-timers do not have cards right now. Uh, you know, BEI supply, like every single person there that has a card uses the card at some point because maybe so-and-so is going to pick this up, this card up or this, you know, thing up. So that would be, that's going to be the department we need to probably have the biggest discussion about, um, what, it, how it would impact them if we go down to one department card. Madam Chair? Yes. As far as that is concern um are the cards separated out where you can... by name everybody has everybody it in their own name, name. Okay. yeah absolutely so each month i get a separate bill that then matches up to the main bill so you know if joe smith uses his card i you know what i'm saying it breaks down everything it's all on the main bill for everybody's card but then it's also they each have a separate individual one so so yes, we can tie it back to everybody. Rec department, also another department that uses the card substantially because they do a lot of online purchasing. Um, so. Madam Chair. Sorry. Yes. I mean, that is some food for thought because at one time we had a one card and then especially if you have multiple employees using it and then you got to track on who. Right. You know, right. well, I didn't use it for that. In the past. You know what I mean? And you got to look at it where at least when it's not that we need them all, but I'm just saying it, it, it's... In my prior employment, you had to come sign the card out. We had one card for Sears, one card for this, one card That's for this. Another. And someone had to come sign it out, go do their purchase, bring it back, which could again be tedious, but I'm just, I'm just throwing this all out there, food for thought. Um, admin department, Lisa's our main person that would use a card for office supplies for every department. She orders supplies for every department. Um, our card holders are Lisa, myself, and Nancy. Nancy usually doesn't even use hers. Um, I've got like Adobe subscription on mine for Mary and I. Um, and then I think our, our bill for the cell phone down at the rec department for the event center or something like that. Um, um, or if I need to get toner or something for my printer or if I, you know, if Lisa's not here, I'll go ahead and order my stuff. Mayor's got a card. If he even knows where it is, I'll be surprised he's never used it. Um, that pretty One much time. that pretty much sums up the cards. Um, and so we, I'll get you the policy, and you could just kind of take the summer to think about. It does take me a substantial amount of time. It takes a little over, like a day, and sometimes a little more to do these entries every month. Because, and not that it wouldn't still take some time, but if we do it along the way, per se, because. I, mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not like I'm not advocating that we do pull. I'm just I'm trying to think of the best way to rein in if you feel we shouldn't use the credit card as much. Now, again, I have the big 
main car. So we'd have, you know, even that, we'd have to think about all of that. Do we want to take some stuff off of auto pay? Do we want to always cut a check when it comes time for salt rather than have the vendor go ahead and bill our car? Um, you know, what actually is appropriate, 79, 609. Which we're good because we took that 400 and cushioned a little bit. So, so yeah, it's four we appropriated that exact 400,000 that we took. Okay. So we should be good. All right. And, and I sorry, did. I did skip over that part. So okay. um, Joe, it's the mayor, little... Rob, and Councilman Weed were able to meet yesterday to determine. Mayor call a graph. You can throw me in there. I said, didn't I say mayor? Joe, no, mayor, me. Rob. You are the mayor. <laughs> Joe, mayor, and Rob. I, oh, I didn't mean to say mayor, Rob. Was sorry, man. Sorry, <laughs> Not me. Follow her out of order, please. Oh my gosh. I need that gong show hook. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, they decided that since we're just getting started, you're just going to be approving legislation with your W if we want to update right. the legislation to show those amounts. Yeah, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. I, I was going to say, yeah, every, we did. Um, everybody should have the spreadsheet mm -hmm. on that. And then we were going to just talk. I think it's just one piece of legislation. The rest we were good on. So we can touch base with that. Okay. And kind of go over all that in the COW as good. we go through each piece of legislation. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah. go over it to cover it if anybody has any questions related to that. Okay. Is there any other business? <clears throat> Once, twice. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Uh, meeting adjourned at seven ten. Okay. I'm going to pause the, I'll stop this stream and then. Yeah, does anyone want to?